Hi everybody, and today you find me 200 miles from home at arguably the most haunted castle in Wales, Craggy Noss, where I will be spending the night, not by choice, but thanks to this being a very thoughtful Christmas present from someone who shall remain nameless. So I shall check in, get settled in, and find out where the bar is and give you the history of this, what looks like a very beautiful place. So yeah, so this is the outside of Craggy North Castle. I'm gonna do another video when I come out of the murder mystery night that I'm gonna go on tonight. I've already been in and the people here are absolutely fabulous, giving me loads of information on what's going on. And so I'm going on the murder mystery night and uh, tomorrow, I'm going on the tour of the castle. So, uh, so yeah, so it's absolutely amazing. Like. But I'm gonna come and look at this again a bit later because I'm sure it's spookier at night. And I'll come back for another chat when I'm out here later. So anyway, all checked in. I would just like to say this is not a hotel review. So I won't be looking to see if my toilet roll has been turned over at the end, if my towels have been turned into amazing swans, or I won't be moving the wardrobe to see if there is any dust behind it. However, I will comment on what sort of stay I've had. So the history. The castle itself is fairly recent by Wales standards. It was built between 1841 and 1843 by Captain Rhys Davis Powell. Now, unhappily, the captain's younger son, wife, and then younger daughter died before him, and his eldest son just two years after him. Now, there is a legend that goes about that this was due to a curse put on the captain by someone he was in debt to after the building of the castle. But I don't know, I think this is just probably a myth. I've only ever heard it in one report. The castle was then bought by a man called Morgan Morgan in 1876, who lived here with his family and his son, also called Morgan Morgan, and his family. I would imagine that could become a bit confusing at times. Anyway, in 1878, the castle was bought by the megastar of her era, the opera singer Adelina Patti. Have you heard of her? No, neither had I. But, now imagine if you suddenly found, found out that Beyonce or Madonna was moving into your little village. Well, that's what it would have been like at that time, because she was a megastar. I will go into Adelina's life later. She went on to live here until her death in 1919, whereupon it became a hospital for tuberculosis patients and was named the Adelina Patti Hospital. In 1959, it became a hospital for the elderly and it finally closed her hospital in 1986. After a time as a wedding venue where the owners put a lot of money into repairs, but they sadly had to close, the castle was sold and is now a hotel, but it's also still a wedding venue and is doing very well. I heard that they did 216 weddings last year. So that is pretty amazing. Anyway, tonight I've got a murder mystery night. So we'll see how we get on there. And then tomorrow morning, I have a history tour of the castle. So I'll let you know and I'll do a bit of video in there if I'm allowed. So anyway, for now, see you later. So this is the part of the hotel where I've been told that the girls behind the bar feel is the scariest part of the So this is the bit they don't like down these stairs So let's have a look This is what they don't like down here It's very cold here. Now this, so this is the fantastic theater that Adelina pa Patti had made. It feels very cold down here. Apparently this is where they have weddings, etc. Now, I don't know. I feel very cold here. Let's have a look here. There's a mirror here. I never like mirrors. 
So, toilets. Oh no. Oh, yeah. That's the ladies. Very, very cold down here. It really is so cold down here. It's unnaturally cold. I just don't like it in this particular area of the theatre and the staircase here. Um, I don't know what it is, but it just is very cold. Uh, so craggy nos at night time. Look at that. Now that is spooky. That is spooky. I had to get a look at it at night time though. Look at that. Well, now it's time for bed, I think. This is the conservatory where we had the murder mystery last night. It's a beautiful place during the day, look. Look at the view. This is where they hold weddings and etc. They're out on the terrace, you can sit there with your drink. An absolutely beautiful place. The theatre here at Kraginos Castle was opened in 1891. It is based on Wagner's Bayreuth Opera House in Bavaria. The opening ceremony took place on the 12th of July and a list of dignitaries attended it. It is said 450 bottles of champagne were drank that night. Sir Henry Irving was meant to give the opening address but couldn't make it, so the actor William Terry stood in for him. This poor man would be murdered by a madman outside the Adelphi Theatre London six years later. The most outstanding feature of this Grade 1 listed building is the ascending, descending floor, which, by the way, of two hand-wound Victorian jacks, raise and lower the floor. The floor is lowered when the floor is used as a theatre, with the floor sloping down to the stage as it is now, and is raised to be level with the stage when used as a ballroom. Adelina's ghost has been seen many times, even in the daytime. Nicknamed the White Lady, she is seen walking up and down the staircase leading to the stage of the theatre. When the castle is quiet, her ghostly operatic arias can sometimes be heard echoing through the corridors. She would also materialise at the end of child patients' beds when the castle was a tuberculosis hospital. So who was the castle's most well-known owner, Adelina Patti? Well, Adelina was born in Madrid, Spain in 1843 and became the world's best known and loved soprano of that era. She was a child prodigy and first took to the stage at eight years old. By the age of 17, she had taken London by storm at Covent Garden enough so that she could buy a house there. Using London as her base, she conquered Europe. The composer Giuseppe Verdi described her as the finest singer that had ever lived. In 1862, she was invited to sing at the White House of the President Abraham Lincoln and his wife Mary. She sang John Howard Payne's Home Sweet Home, and the Lincolns, who were mourning their son Willie, who had died of typhoid, were brought to tears. So much so that they requested an encore of the song, and from then on it became her signature tune. At her peak, Adelina could command $5,000 a performance, around $143,000 in these times. 
Which it is said she demanded in gold before curtain up or she wouldn't perform. Out of her three husbands, Adelina's happiest times was with her second husband, the Italian tenor Ernesto Nicolini, with whom she lived here at Gragunos until his death in 1898. She then married a much younger man, a Swedish baron, Rolf Sederström. Adelina died here at Gragunos Castle on September the 27th, 1919. She was later buried near her favorite composer, Rossini, in Paris. So this is backstage behind the safety curtain where here you can see all the original scenery curtains from the Victorian age. This was very interesting. I've never seen behind the back of a stage before. And now we are going down the stairs to actually under the stage. Now I've got to say, there were parts of this that was quite creepy and they do do parts of the ghost hunt down here. But right under the stage was very, very interesting. Now, on one side of the back part of the wall, they've got all this stuff about the history of Adelina Patti. And as you can see, it's a very dark place. And now, at this point, Jeremy took us upstairs to the parts of the castle that are not open to the public, apart from ghost hunts, and have not been renovated. Now, as you can see, I went off for a little wander on my own away from the group and found this very, what I thought was a very dark, creepy stairway, which looks lighter in the camera. Now, this is Adelina Patti's bedroom. This has recently been cleaned out and a fantastic job has been done on it to make it look as good as this. This is the view from Adelina's bedroom. It really is amazing. But I think we should say what an amazing job the resident ghost hunter, I believe his name is Pete, has done to clear these rooms. It's definitely made a big difference since I last saw a video of the place. Amazing, well done Pete. Now we are going up that dark stairway and it's pretty creepy going up here in daylight. So what it's like up here in pitch darkness on a ghost hunt, I can only imagine. Now I'm walking a little bit behind the group so that I can go into the rooms on my own just to get a feel of just how scary or spooky they are. And I've got to say, you can see the tables are laid out for the seances, etc. they do when the ghost hunt is on. But these places are in bad repair and have been left as they are. And I think that makes them all the more scary. So it's really exciting. I will be coming to a ghost hunt to see how it goes on that. But it really is interesting. Now, this room, I did get a weird feeling in. And it wasn't until I was coming out of it that a lady informed me that a man hung himself in here when his pregnant girlfriend was sent away from the house. Now, I can't confirm this story, but I did feel weird in here. Now, I'm presuming that this is some sort of doctor's room with the reclining couch and the sink, etc. Um, I didn't feel this was spooky at all. It was quite light, actually, but very interesting all the same. Yeah, same here. Now, this is the largest room upstairs, and I presume this is where they do the large, largest seance, etc. But it's under the most disrepair. I think they probably use it for storage now, etc. We finished off in the cellars. The most interesting place for me down here was the slab room where they kept Adelina's body after she died. Now this place would be scary at night time on the ghost hunt. I've got to say a big thank you to Jeremy for an absolutely amazing two hour tour for a tenor. What a bargain. 
Now this is the bar area of the hotel. When I arrived at 3 p.m. on a Friday afternoon, I basically was here on my own with the delightful Chloe and Cass, who kindly filled me in on the castle and their experiences for a good two hours. Now I've got to say that everybody who works in this castle is so friendly and that's what made the stay so brilliant. This room is basically a shrine to Adelina Patti with a lot of memorabilia and her records which she recorded here in the castle up on the walls. A really nice place. Now I've got to say that this little drawing room was my favourite room in the whole castle as it was Adelina's husband Ernesto Nicolini. It's small easy to heat and very cosy by the fire and that little button at the side of the fireplace where you can summon another rum and coke instantly I would have been in my element. The ceiling I was informed is very unusual and it costs a fortune to upkeep but this is a very pleasant room that I only got good vibes from and as I say that little button there that would have been a lifesaver for me. I'd have spent my whole life in there. Absolutely smashing place and absolutely loved it. Now there's a big portrait of Adelina Patti on the, on the wall there. I can't walk over there because there's fresh polish on the dance floor. But yeah, it's very, very nice. But there was a weird feeling down there, didn't I? So if we go through these gates, this is where I'm staying. This is my room. The green room and a very nice room it is too. Very light and airy. And what a, a lovely backdrop. Look at that, the Welsh mountains, beautiful. Take a walk down here. There's a picnic table and everything over here, look. Very nice indeed. I just thought you might like to know, the most haunted room in the castle is room 36. And if you get room 13, that used to be the mortuary. Most of the ghosts recorded here are of children probably Victorian children or children who died in the TB epidemic. Anyway, just, just so thought I'd let you fill you in on that before we go out the gate. Out of the wall garden. And just look at that. I mean, there's a lake down there, so I'm going to take a trip down there in a bit, I think, to that lake down the bottom. Now, I've had to do a voiceover here because the river is so loud. I'm stood on the Adelina Patti Bridge. To get down to here is a nice, slow, meandering walk down from the castle. It looks steep, but it really isn't. I've come down here to look for Adelina's pavilion. Now it's a beautiful walk, so it's worth doing. And there is a cafe at the start finish. So well worth the visit. Now, while I was searching for Adelina's summer house, I came across this building, all closed up. I don't think it's been open for a while by the looks of it. But it turns out that this is the pavilion. Now, whether that is the same thing as the summer house, I don't know at the moment. This is where Adelina and her friends would get changed to play either tennis and croquet out on the lawn in the front of the building. It is said she would also put on concerts for friends in the summer here too. Now, a lot of the information is on this notice board that's on the actual door at the front. 
And this is the, the lawns that Adriana would play tennis and croquet on after they'd got changed in this summer house. Amazing, as I say. It's been an amazing place to visit. I found out so much about Greggy Noss, Adelina Patti, the things that went on in the tuberculosis hospital, the ghosts of that time, the ghosts of Adri, Adelina. It's been an amazing journey. I've really enjoyed this weekend and it is a smashing place. And I shall be back because you cannot beat the staff at this hotel. They are amazing. They're friendly, they're informative, they really are nice. So uh, that's a reason to come back to Kraginos Castle in itself. So I managed to find this window around the back. There's not much to see, but that is the inside. There's benches around the sides and then the stained glass windows. Well, that's the end, sadly, of my weekend at Kraginos Castle. And I'm really sad to be leaving, to be honest. The castle is amazing. The food was amazing as was the room and the murder mystery night, the first of many, I hope. But it's the welcoming staff that make this hotel what it is. So thank you, Chloe, Cass and Jeremy and everybody else who I didn't get your names who made this such a terrific stay. I will put all Craggy Noss's details down as a wedding venue, ghost hunt and murder mystery venue, I doubt it can be beaten. If you, for some reason, you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and maybe subscribe to the channel and ding the bell for further notifications. I will definitely book it, be booking up soon to come on the ghost hunt weekend. So I'm really looking forward to that. So thanks everybody for watching and I'll see you next time. Thank you. little statue down here. I can hear a waterfall somewhere. So we'll have to search that out in a bit. That is one big tower. Wow. And then round and back to the conservatory. If you come outside here later on with me pint and sit here, if this weather stays the way it is, look at that down there. Oh my God.